So how's your first day, man? It's good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been fun the last few days um, with everyone being back pretty early, so. Um, I think I say this every year, but there's a really good energy right now. The guys are excited, as they should be. Was there, I mean, it's, this is a little different to come and have a scrimmage on the first day, you know? I mean, is that something that you've done before? Is that, is that uh, I think in the past we might have had a scrimmage, but after practice. But, um, I mean, it's great. And the best way to get in game shape is to play games. So uh, it was very up-tempo. The guys were working really hard. And, um, obviously, the, the execution will, will come and everyone will settle down as the camp gets going, get more comfortable with each other, but it's, uh, I think it's the best way to, to, to find your legs and to get in the game shape. Chris, the last few years, externally, the expectations were success for this team was progress. You know, from the year, you know, from the previous year, internally, I'm sure the drivers to make the playoffs, but, you know, when you get there, it was progress. Is progress now making playoffs? Like, you have to make the playoffs this year because of where this team is in this phase that it's been going through. Yeah, I think if you ask every player and every team at their training camp, regardless of where people think their, their team is, um, they're going to tell you that their expectations to make the playoffs. That is our goal as a group coming into camp. That's our one goal. Punch our ticket and then go from there. Because Gerard yesterday told us that, you know, the plan is to probably have a captain by the time the regular season starts. It's been a long time since you guys had one. So I think Mika was saying it kind of feels like the, sort of the norm. but. What are your thoughts on the importance that it would have in the room to have somebody wearing that C after the length of time that it's been without one? Yeah, I think the entire time I've been here, um, it's, uh, it's been on the chest of a guy who's been the figurehead and the example on the ice. But the most important thing has been the, the collective group of leaders that we've had and a healthy blend of young guys and vets. Uh, you know, you can't just have the right guy wearing the C and not, you know, not have him surrounded by vets who are going to uh, perpetuate that message. Um, so I think as important that might, as that might be, I think having a group of, of leaders and a group of, of veterans is obviously very important. And, um, with that being said, I mean, in 2014 when we made the Cup, we, we traded away our captain right before our round, and uh, obviously we missed him a ton, but we had a, a ton of leaders in the room and, and guys stepped up. So yeah, it is, you know, if he thinks it's important, if you know, maybe it's the right step, but at the end of the day, we need to, we need to strong group of leaders, um, which we have here. So um, as long as we're all on the same page and pulling in the right direction, I think we'll be able to accomplish our goals. The other thing I asked me again, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this, but how your leadership style, obviously we know you've been here longer than anybody else, but how do you try to lead the team? Like what, what would you describe as the way that, that you try to function wearing, wearing the A for however many years and all that now? I think for anyone, it's it's about being genuine, true to yourself, not trying to be something that you're not. And um, I've always been the young guy on every team that I've ever been on growing up. And after the you know everything, four or five years ago, I quickly became the old guy. <laughs> um, so for me, it was about figuring out who who I was as as a leader, as a veteran. Um, and that's something I'm continuing to do and continuing to grow and, and am working on every single day. But uh, for me, if, uh, I think. Um, there's an increase of self-awareness of, of, of who I am as, as a leader and as a veteran. Um, and you know, roundabout way of answering your question, I think that um, I, I like working with people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I think I've, I've been around long enough, you know, experienced enough to, to, to you know, share some of that experience and, and um, to be compassionate, to be empathetic, um, understanding of of a position that a guy might be in, um, to to approach guys and to, you know not, not necessarily with all the answers, but to listen to understand, um, and that's something I think that we have up and down the organization right now. Uh, there's a, a very clear goal, a very clear focus. Everyone wants to win hockey games. Everyone wants to make the playoffs, and everyone knows that to do that, you know, we need the most out of everyone. We need everyone to be the best version of themselves. So you see that from management, from coaches. Uh, players have picked up that, that torch and ran with it where, you know, you know, what can we do to help type of thing. Um, it, not that it's, it's never been divisive here, but there's just, it's very, it's very clear that everyone is, you know, there's, there's a, lot of, uh, it's a lot of love, a lot of love in this building right now, I think. Um, and guys are building each other up and guys want to, to grow and to be better. And like I said earlier, to pull in the right direction you know, as a collective, as a group. So. Um, I think that's 
know, that's that's I guess my leadership style and way. It's I, I do like working one on one with guys and to have those those conversations. Um, I wouldn't view myself as a huge rah rah cheerleader. Um, I'm definitely not quiet on the bench or in the locker room. Um, but um, I mean, I'm a happy-go-lucky guy. I'm grateful and appreciative to be here and be playing pro hockey. And um, you know, if I can help direct people towards that, even when it's not going well, I think that you know, I'm accomplishing my job because we, we do something pretty incredible for a living. And, uh, we're treated pretty well, to say the least. And um, playing an organization that treats their players as well, if not better than any other place in the league. So um, that, that tightness you spoke of. Do you think that's a, because now you had, you had a few years ago you had a lot of roster turnover, but now it's been a lot of the same guys here for at least a few years. Uh, do you think that that's a function of that? I mean, do you, do you think that it feels like the core has formed now after there's a few years of uncertainty? Uh, I think any time you, you know, spend a few seasons with people, obviously those relationships deepen, but I think we've done a good job over the last few years of, Peeling back those layers and um, deepening those relationships at a pretty quick, quick pace. Um, I don't think there's been as much an uncertainty as you think. I mean, I think every year, regardless of whatever the, the what position the team's in, I think I've said this as well in the past. Like, even when we were, you know, in the Eastern Conference Final, Cup Final, we're up against the Caps, so we're losing more guys than we thought we would, and then you know maybe. We're not necessarily making the playoffs. There's not quite as much turnover. It's just I think the nature of the NHL is going to be turnover, um, and it's, it's it's part of professional sports. Um, but I, I think that's something that, that that makes this place pretty special. Is that uh, guys are encouraged to come here and be themselves, be comfortable. Um, obviously, buy into what we're doing as a group. But they, you know, the young guy shouldn't be scared to walk into the room to to, to be himself. He shouldn't be walking on eggshells. That's it, Chris. What do you think? The additions that you guys made, the types of players that you guys brought in in the offseason, what is that? What's the impact that can have on this team in particular, and maybe your, even your reputation around the league? Too? I mean, it's it's hard to say because obviously we, we haven't mm -hmm. you know seen our full roster on the ice yet. But uh, the little I can say is you know around the rink during captain's practices, away from the rink, we're spending time together there. All I can say is that they're terrific guys and terrific individuals, and knowing their track record, they're guys who have won, been on winning teams, saw what a winning culture looks like, um, and that is invaluable. Um, the experiences that I had as a young guy playing on some of those teams that, like I said, won the conference finals and the cup finals, um, that's invaluable. They, those guys have, have stories and have lessons and have taken away from those experiences, things that they can share with the group and share with the young guys, and they can they can set the tone whether or not they're, you know, it's their first year and they're you know, more outspoken or more quiet. Um, and those are guys that are going to they're going to be able to lead immediately and to add to the group immediately. So, um, but yeah, like I said, I can really only comment, only comment about how they are as, as individuals and they're terrific people. It's been awesome getting to know them, and I'm really excited to compete with them. Last one. Okay. Last one. Okay. <laughs> Plus two. Kind of going off of that, you mentioned you know having that leadership core and adding all these new players with such experience, and the core itself has experience together too. Do you feel like that this season there are additional expectations for that specific group to perform because of that, because of having the time together and adding experience players with experience? Do well, I think there's an added like expectations for that group to perform? Um. I mean, we, we expect ourselves to perform. Um, we put more pressure on ourselves than you guys ever will or ever could. So um, we know what we expect of ourselves day in and day out. Um, so at the end of the day, that's, I think that's all that matters. I mean, we've set the bar incredibly high, and we intend on, on meeting those expectations we set for ourselves. You were very complimentary of uh, Lafreniere all during last season. Uh, I'm wondering he, how he, he had me fooled. <laughs> <laughs> how how do you think he he handled what was at least statistically a, a, a tough year? Um, and have you in your conversations with him over the last few weeks or the summer noticed a difference in him coming back for a second year? I 
the most impressive thing about him is he is unapologetically himself, day in and day out, regardless of what's happening. Mm -hmm. who, who, within, is who is he? Yeah. He's he's a he's a bright, happy dude. He loves playing hockey. He loves being here. Um, he's uh, he's quick with a joke, and he's he's very laid back until the puck drops, and then he competes as hard as anyone that I've ever played with, and he's matured beyond his years on the ice, around the room. Um, I mean, being around him, he's last year's first year. He doesn't carry himself like a 18, 19 year old kid. He's, I mean, maybe it's just from you know being in the position that he's been for as long as he has. But at the same time, he's he's very selfless in that he doesn't think less of himself. He just thinks of himself less. He he's concerned about winning hockey games. He's going to do what it takes to win hockey games. And he was a guy that bought in. Not that people didn't buy him last year, but he was a guy that bought in right from the get go and understands how to win hockey games, even at this level, and understands what he needs to do. Um, communicative, um, and, and I mean, his game it just continues to grow and will continue to grow because of that, because his priorities are, are, are correct and set, and um, just a, a terrific, terrific person, terrific player. Um, we're incredibly lucky to have him.